we are calling it because it is the first, the very first annual literary festival that we're having in Trinidad and Tobago. Let me begin by introducing the people sitting at the table with me, people whose enthusiasm and support for, for this endeavor is actually making it possible. Sitting here is Lisa McCarthy, who is from the Republic Bank, and she is a management associate, group marketing and communications. Next to her is Deborah Goodman, who is manager of corporate communications at NALIS. And as you know, NALIS is going to be the home of the festival. We're going to take it over. She doesn't know that. We're going to take it over. To, her, to my right of the table is Winda Chandler. And Winda, Winda is the community relations officer at the National Gas Company at Trinidad and Tobago. And to her right is Lennox Grant, who you probably all recognize as a veteran newspaper man, but he's here today is in his, in his capacity as a consulting editor at OCM, which is the one Caribbean media who are marketing partners in the festival. So let's start at the beginning. What is the Bocas Lit Fest and why is it called that? It's a four-day festival of words, written and spoken, of writing and reading, of books, of poetry, of fiction and non-fiction. It's not a book fair. Many of us have been to book fairs in Trinidad and Tobago, but it's not a book fair and it's not a literary conference. It's not pointy-headed, it's not academic. It's four days of fun for everyone, from the youngest to the oldest. People who like to hear, read, write, or tell stories. And heaven knows that during the next four days, well not the next four days, but those four days, you're gonna have a lot of stories, lots and lots of stories. We've never had um, a Lit Fest, which is short for a literary festival. We wanted to call it Lit Fest because we didn't want people to be put off by the idea of literature, because you know, we're not a very reading society, and part of what we try to do is to ferment reading. And the Books Lit Fest is going to be a lively, we think, energetic, enjoyable celebration mostly for free, and nearly all of it open to the public. As for the name, well, you know that boca is a Spanish word for mouth, and the boca's the dragon, the dragon's mouth, is our maritime gateway to the Caribbean and the rest of the world. And during the festival, we're actually inviting writers from around the world and readers to enter and come and celebrate with us our literary heritage in this country and also the wider Caribbean. And actually, a lot of the Caribbean that's outside of the Caribbean. This region has produced some of the world's finest writers, and we want to create an annual forum for us to enjoy their work, and that of so many new and emerging writers at home and abroad. We're not the first people to have a literary festival. Antigua, St. Lucia, St. Martin, and Dominica, much smaller than us, all of them, have all got one. And I've heard that the lit limers of the newly defunct Calabash Festival <laughs> in Jamaica are all heading south to the Focus Lit Fest. So probably we will in fact take over the, the whole of the library. <laughs> <laughs> now let's deal with the basics. Um, the dates. January, uh, sorry, Thursday the 28th of April to Sunday the 1st of May, which will be the last four days of, well, essentially the last three days of April. And we hope that every year the festival will take place at the, um, at the same time, just before the rains and after Easter and all those things and carnival are out of the way. Although all during the month of April, the Republic Bank um, KFC Children's Focus Lit Fest will be reaching into communities around the country. Every weekend, storytellers will be working with children and telling and getting them to tell stories, exploring our oral tradition that so much of our literature draws upon. And that will be an important element of the Focus Lit Fest. The venue, as I say, is the National Library and the old fire station, that beautiful building next door that sits so beautifully next to this terribly modern one and that and that wonderful old one and we're going to be that we're going to be incorporating that into the festival village and um, the village will include the performance stage in the amphitheater outside uh, the ground floor of the old fire station uh, which is rather large and the ground floor of this building is going to include this room that we're in and another seminar room we'll be running the workshops we're going to be the chief librarian here of the children's libraries here um, we're going to be taking over the children's library too. <laughs> and um, we'll be having a booksellers emporium in the atrium area downstairs. And some of the booksellers are here, which is very good this morning. The arcades, which is um, on Hart Street, 
what, what is what the library calls the arcade, which is a bit of the library that faces out onto Hart Street and out to Abercrombie Street, will also be incorporated into the Festival Village. On Abercrombie Street, there will be um, a lot of the open mic and, and a lot of the um, performance poetry. And along Hart Street is where all the food is going to be. You know how we love our food. So we, all the food and drink is going to be out there and people will be able to sit around in the amphitheater when there's nothing going on and around the place, you know, relaxing or reading their books. The writers. Over 50 writers and literary performers, local, regional and international, who will be involved in the festival. Some are stars in the literary firmament, all of them hugely talented. Some of them are in this room and uh, for the press, members of the press and the media who are here. Um, many of the people that I've mentioned, they're, they're writers here, they're booksellers here, they're uh, some of the organizers here, so afterwards you can feel free to, to talk to them. Just ask me who they are and I'll point them out. Anyone who loves words and books will have a chance to breathe the same air as some of their favorite authors, to interact with them, and to discover the work of some remarkable new writers. There are quite a few writers coming from the United States all Caribbean writers living in the United States, in, the Uni in, um, in Canada, in Britain, and all around the Caribbean will be coming in, plus our own writers from here, and our performance poets, and, and um, other people, not actually performance poets, who will be working with us on some of the workshops. One of the reasons for actually starting this festival is that there's a whole generation of emerging Caribbean writers many of them educated and living in the wider world, whose work we do not know here, and who are not always known among that very group either. And there are also our budding writers here who we want to support by showcasing and exploring their work year after year. A good example of that support is that we're taking advantage of having a rare collection of successful authors and publishers present to run a series of lively, informative, and practical sessions in our workshops, aimed at budding and ambitious writers in all the genres, including how to get published with publishers Margaret Busby and Jeremy Pointing. For those keen on writing raps on Calypso, lyrics, uh, Wendell Man Man Warren and, uh, of Three Canal, and the one and only Short Pants will be putting <laughs> budding Calypso lyric writers through their paces. There will be a small fee for attendance at all the workshops, but everything else, as I said, will be free, including the screening of films based on Caribbean classics. Um, we'll also be having lots of, we hope, stimulating panel discussions on literary and non-literary matters, including what will be a wonderful conversation, we think, called The Lives of Others by the prize-winning biographers of V.S. Naipaul, Ralph Ellison, and Frank Collymore. The celebration of the 25th anniversary of People Tree Press, which is the leading publisher of Caribbean fiction and poetry, um, will, will also be here. The tributes of Keith Smith, um, there will be um, a tribute to Keith Smith and also to the distinguished Martinican writer uh, Edward Gleeson, who they both died earlier this year. And there will be a wide range of live musical performances that explore the meeting of words and sounds, and all of that is for free. It's a very full program, and a copy of the program is in the press kit. Some of them have been distributed. We've got some more to hand out after we've all spoken. And there's a list of all the authors in there. There will be names that are not on there, and that is because each year, each year we want to have different authors and we want to keep the festival fresh every year and interesting. So we're keeping some of our big guns for the years to come. I mean, Nicholas Lachlan and I have been working on the program. We, you know, we're planning way ahead in three, five years. So we're trying to you know, save some of our goodies or to last. Another objective of the Bogus Fest is to pull together all the elements of the industry on an annual basis. Writers may be the most important element, but they need editors, publishers, printers, illustrators, designers, distributors, booksellers, reviewers, and consumers. It's a big business, but it has too little of a profile in this country, and actually, I think, in the region. And the festival will bring many of those elements together and hopefully serve as a catalyst for getting the dots better joined up in the future in order to help grow the industry so that our writers can benefit. None of this would be possible without the financial support of our sponsors. In a time of economic uncertainty, it takes vision, and I think courage, to invest in something that is attempting to break new ground. And I'm very proud to announce that, that um, four of our parties supporting sponsors and main collab, well, three of our main, three of our main supporting sponsors, 
and uh,